Hello, friend, and welcome back to another episode of the Camera Brave Show. My name is Marissa, and today we're going to talk all about boundaries, specifically for beginners. Like, say you're just starting in business and you haven't necessarily set up any boundaries or parameters yet. So I'm going to talk about my personal experience and the pivot that I made from kind of working whenever all these hours, nights, weekends to actually having boundaries and structure in my schedule. And then I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips that have really helped me keep these boundaries in place. Before we dive on in, I'm going to read a quick review that was left for the Camera Brave show. Uh, This was left on Apple podcast. It's uh, five stars and it says looking for a new podcast. Look no further. The Camera Brave Show takes such a genuine, authentic approach to truly understanding what your message is, finding your voice, and then trusting yourself enough to grow. I love Marissa's vulnerability in her own journey, how passionate she is about helping other entrepreneurs and content creators really step into their own confidence. Thank you so much. The username on this is A Rock. So thank you so much for leaving that review and thank you for taking the time out of your day to leave a review. If you're enjoying the show, if there's anything in particular that you want to see more content of, please leave me a review because that's one of the only ways that I can know what specific content you guys are enjoying. When I look at the numbers of the most downloaded episodes, they're all pretty even. I see some that spike a little bit higher than others. So that's kind of my indicator of, okay, I'm going to dive into this topic more. One thing you guys seem to really enjoy listening to are topics about energy and building your energy on camera and a lot of like camera specific topics. I'm seeing the numbers a little higher there as opposed to uh, mindset topics. So please let me know what you're enjoying and what you'd like to hear more of. And please take just a quick moment to go on over to Apple podcast and write a review and rate the show. I very, very deeply appreciate this. And it allows me to feel like we're connecting and that it's a two-sided conversation, not just a one-sided conversation. Okay, tell me if this sounds familiar. You're new to your business. Maybe you still have a nine to five or maybe you just left your nine to five and you're building your business and you're excited and you've got this vision and this passion and hunger and you are working whenever you've got your laptop, you're working in late into the evening, like dipping late into the night. You'll work on the weekends. What are weekends? You have an empire to build. You're running your business. You work literally whenever, because either you have been able to leave your nine to five and you want to create your own sort of structure and work whatever hours you want. Or if you're still confined to your nine to five and you're having to work around that. So this happened to me when I first started in business, and I honestly didn't know if it was just me or what. I tried to iron out a nine to five schedule for myself, and it was not working. So since it wasn't working, I was like, I'll just work whenever. I'll work whenever I whenever I feel like it, whenever I have deadlines I need to meet, whatever is going to work for my current season, that's when I'll work. I'll work all the time if I feel like it. And There are so many flaws in this system that I'd created for myself. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I'm now seeing other people who are brand new to their business doing the same thing. And I'm not trying to sit here and pretend like I have years and years of experience, but I've heard a lot of industry leaders talk about boundaries. And it was a concept that I couldn't really grasp until I was like maybe six or seven months into running my own business. I would hear people talk about boundaries and I would go, yes, one day I'm going to have boundaries, but for now I'm just going to work whenever I can. And I'm seeing other entrepreneurs that are just starting doing the same thing. What changed for me was when I brought on an assistant. When I brought on an assistant, I realized that my chaos of a schedule was affecting our communication and my ability to create and meet deadlines while working with her, because I would be sending her things that needed to be out on Monday on a Sunday. And I felt terrible, but I didn't have the structure and the schedule and the planning to know that it needed to be done obviously well before Friday at 5 PM. So I'd be sending her things on the weekend. And then I started to get stressed out. It happened maybe like three weeks in a row. And I was like, I love this assistant. She is amazing. She has helped me so much. And she's going to like leave and quit. If I don't set up a better structure system, she's not going to continue to work with me. If I'm always sending her things on a Saturday, Sunday, when her boundaries were very clear that she did not work on weekends. When I first brought her on, She had her boundaries outlined. She worked 
essentially nine to five, didn't do weekends. If there was an emergency that happened in the evening, you know, that sort of thing. But the type of work we do, there really aren't emergencies because it's mostly social media content, emails, that sort of thing. Ironically, this all centered around the podcast because the podcast was content that had to go out every single week and only I can create it. I'm the only one who can create the podcast. And I still currently edit my own podcast because I think it makes me a better podcast host. And in all of the growth that I want for the podcast, I'm not there yet to having an editor edit my episodes for me. And what it came down to was me sending her podcast episodes and content very last minute for her to schedule to post on social media. And after I think the third week, I said, enough, enough. We have to sit down. We have to create some boundaries here. And I'm going to talk about three different tips that I have for you if you're like brand new to setting boundaries, or even if you're still in that mindset of, I don't need boundaries. If you feel like you don't need boundaries, I want you to ask yourself, describe your schedule in one word. Because for me, my schedule was chaos. Because I had complete autonomy, complete power over my own schedule for the first time ever. Our brains have been wired to love structure and schedule. Going to school, you don't just go to school whenever, you go to school at a certain time. Class starts at a certain time. Lunch is at a certain time. We're used to schedule, we're used to routine. And then if you've ever had a nine to five, then you know you have your, your maybe your morning break, you've got a clock in at a certain time, you've got your lunch time, you've got your clock out time, right? We need structure, we crave structure. And I'm really not trying to sit here and pretend like I've got it all figured out. I'm still working on my systems and on my habits and I'm still working on me. Always a work in progress, like constant work in progress here. But setting boundaries made a huge difference for me. And it made me feel like I was able to take my business more serious and feel more like a professional, not in the terms of, I need to come up here and feel like I'm, you know, fancy Mrs. Video marketing coach, but in the terms of the structure and the boundaries made it feel like a business because businesses have hours of operation. And I started to apply that to my business. And I started to see these are the days off. These are the hours of operation. And something changed within the way that I approached business. And it also allowed me to communicate with my amazing assistant and keep her on because I wasn't sending her crazy things on the weekends. It also is helpful to my clients that I have structure and that they know when they can expect to hear from me. I actually don't think that I would have been able to add all the components to my business that I have if I hadn't set these boundaries. And if I hadn't followed these three sort of guidelines that I'm going to go over here in a minute, but listen, if you feel like you're burning the candle at both ends, and if you feel like you're not focused, but you're working all the time, very, very deeply consider setting some boundaries in your routine. So my first tip that has seriously helped me create boundaries was I started to set up systems and assigning my days. So Thursdays, are the days that I sit down and I do a podcast episode. It is on my calendar, on my Google calendar, on my phone, podcast episode, Thursday morning. That's my priority. And I'm constantly refining it. I'm constantly trying to, you know, be the best podcast host that I can be. But I started assigning Thursdays to the podcast. Does it take me a whole day? No, but it's my priority for that day. So I will sit down, record, edit, upload, write the blog post that goes alongside the podcast Thursdays. And then once that's done, I can move on to the next thing that's on my schedule, but it allowed me to have structure and assignment to the podcast. And the podcast wasn't getting done uh, like late on a Friday. And then I'm kind of rushing ahead and trying to piece it all together on a Sunday. And then I'm sending it to my assistant late. And then it gets just hairy and not clean. It was messy. It was messy. And now it's, now it's tidy. And not only is it always done on Thursdays, but I was so intent on not getting behind and not feeling behind because I was feeling behind because I would do a podcast episode on a Friday and then it would release on a Monday and it would give me anxiety. And I just had to step myself and check myself and be like, you are the reason that you feel behind. If you feel behind, then get ahead because 
only you can get ahead of your own show. It's your show. Like claim it, take control of it, put yourself back in the driver's seat and create the show and the system that you want it to be. And so that's what I did. I put my episodes ahead one week. So the camera brave show is recorded over a week out. So I record them on Thursdays and this is not the episode that's going to release the up, upcoming Monday, it's going to release the Monday after that. So I'm a full week ahead and Thursdays are my days. Like I really try to stick with that. Sometimes it ends up getting to a Friday, but not to a Saturday, Sunday. That leads me into my next point, assign your yes and your no times. So if I'm behind on the podcast, it may happen on a Friday, but it will not happen on a Saturday or a Sunday. Because one of my absolute no's is to not send something like a podcast to my assistant on the weekend. No way. Now, the only time that I would communicate with her on a weekend is when we're like launching something or if my cart is open, but she knows that it's, it's like an open communication style where it's kind of all hands on deck. So know your yes and your no boundaries. Know when you're going to say yes to work and nope, no way. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Have there been weeks where I've had to skip podcast episodes to adhere to this rule? Yes. However, being a week ahead and always looking ahead and trying to plan and schedule and be as intentional as possible has definitely helped. Another no thing is whenever she takes a trip or I take a trip. And I know that may sound absolutely obvious, but... But there were times in the beginning where if she would be off for a weekend, I would send her things and, and know that she wouldn't look at them till she got back. But I went on a trip and I didn't hear from her once. And I realized that that was really nice. And she could have messaged me and been like, this is for when you get back and then sent it. But the truth is, if she sent that message, I was going to read it. And then I was going to be thinking about it while I was on my trip. So it felt so nice to not even have any of that happen or like not even have any messages sent my way, no emails, no obligations at all till I got back. And it felt like a very well-respected boundary. So that's a line that I will not cross. And one thing that is great is that we communicate on Slack and Slack has the ability to schedule a message. So while she's gone, if I've got something on my mind, I can write it all out and hit send on and then schedule it for when she's back. So I get it done. I get it out of my head, sent her way, but it's not going to actually show up in her messages until she's back and once it's scheduled to send. So that's been very helpful as well. Then the last but not least thing is view your boundaries as helpful, not as restrictive. I think when we're first approaching boundaries, we think, I don't need that. And then we think, well, I don't want to feel limited. I want to work whenever my peak is, whether you're a morning person or an evening person, or maybe you're a little bit of both. I personally get a good little boost in the morning. I feel like I'm highly productive, but then at night, I can get a good amount of work done and kind of get in this, like, once the sun is down, I can kind of get in this working groove. So for a while, I wanted to be able to work evenings, but once I set that boundary of, okay, I'm going to stop working around 5 PM, then I realized, oh, I'm able to be just as productive during the day. So don't view the boundaries as well. I'm good at working at night. And if I set these boundaries and I'm not able to work at night, view them as helpful not as restrictive or else I don't think they're going to work out for you. I can personally say that I would not have been able to create my monthly group, the Camera Brave Club. Uh, it's a paid group and I release trainings once a month and we have Q&A time and video feedback and coaching calls. I honestly don't think I would have been able to create that if I hadn't had this specific system for the podcast. Creating one system even if it was just for content, like the podcast, showed me that the power of assigning my days. So Thursdays on the calendar, podcast. Tuesdays on the calendar, the club. It showed me that you can plan out, you can schedule things, and you can be ahead and prepared. You don't have to fly by the seat of your pants. You can reclaim that driver's seat and be ahead if you want to be ahead. If you feel like you're behind, if you feel like there's 
um, something that you like can't even keep up with, like something that you put into your own schedule that you're like, why am I behind? Why can't I feel good and in control and in charge? Then I want you to challenge yourself and say, how can I get in charge? How can I get in control? Because it is that simple for me. It was setting aside a day to create one extra podcast episode, publishing, scheduling the whole thing, creating it. And then from there, sticking to Thursdays. And if it has to be a Friday, then it has to be a Friday. At the time that I'm recording this, we're in the middle of the holidays. So there have been a couple that I've had to record on a Friday. However, I know coming up in a week, I'm going to have to take a full week off for a really big, exciting project I'm working on. But I want my podcast episode to still come out on Thursday. So instead of feeling rushed, instead of feeling last minute, instead of feeling I have to skip one, I created an episode on Tuesday. And I'm able to actually kind of cross over my days. Tuesdays, I work on the club. And that may include recording a training or a tutorial or a coaching call or going live in my Facebook group. So that means that I'm camera ready. So if I have to record a podcast episode, I've got the opportunity to do it on Tuesday. Likewise, Thursday, camera ready. So if I have to record a training or if I feel you know that I want to go live and talk to the group or anything, I'm able to cross that over to Thursday. So having these two structured assigned days has made all the difference. And do these things take up my whole day? No, absolutely not. But they're my priority. And having that ability to create structure in my business has made it feel like a business. I have hours of operation. I have days off. We take vacation. We respect boundaries. And if all of this just sounds good to you, and maybe you haven't implemented it yet, know that you can. Don't think boundaries aren't for me. I fell into that trap as well. Think about the freedom that these boundaries can give you because that's what they've done for me. They haven't minimized the amount of work that I'm able to do. They have shown me how much time I have within a nine to five type of schedule. That's what I went for. I went for a rather typical like nine to five ish schedule and it's worked out so well for me because I don't have to feel the trap of I can work nights. I can be a night owl. I used to study late at night when I was in school. So maybe I can keep up. No, because I'm a business. I need to operate like a business. And for me, that meant operating nine to five. Another huge thing, check out this lighting. Natural light makes such a difference to me. Lighting is a big deal. I'm right by a window on purpose. So if you're watching me on YouTube, you can see that all of my videos are lit a little bit to the left because I let myself have my window open. This is what it looks like closed. And does it still look completely fine? Yes, absolutely. But I do feel like this brightens it up a little bit more and makes my eyes look a little bit lighter and adds just a little bit more to the aesthetic of the video. It's the little things like that that matter to me as someone who came from the world of video production. Your schedule does not have to be chaos. Your business does not have to feel behind or fly by the seat of your pants. It can feel structured and routined because if that's what your brain wants, give your brain that. Give it that structure. Give it that schedule because it may just be you right now. But what about in the future if you want to bring someone on? Do you really want them to feel feel your chaos in your work environment? Or do you want them to feel the structure and knowing, okay, this person works this time to this time. If I need to go to them, I can go to them during these hours. I just, I recall so vividly hearing things about boundaries and hearing other people speak on boundaries and thinking, I don't need that. I'm just starting. I don't need hours of operation. I don't need boundaries. I'm just starting and I'm hustling. But the truth is like, I'm still starting and hustling at nine months in. So how long does this starting hustling mentality continue on for? And how long are you going to let your schedule kind of control you? There's that saying, how's it go? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail not trying to speak anything negative over your business. I'm not talking about your business failing. I'm talking about you feeling in control, you feeling structured and feeling accomplished in the schedule that you're creating and in the business that you're building.
My friends, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I do hope that it's maybe opened some of your eyes to the opportunities inside of boundaries and they're not like handcuffs. They're they really are opportunities. They're space. When you set boundaries, you're breathing like fresh life into your schedule. And it's amazing. And I, I very deeply hope that you will consider implementing them or maybe even just taking a look at your boundaries and re-solidifying them because that's kind of what we have to do with boundaries. We have to keep at them. Sometimes we have to regroup them or reassign them. And sometimes we've got to reinforce them. So I challenge you to take a look at your boundaries, especially if you're listening to this as it released, we're getting right into a brand new year. So it's a great time to look at your schedule and look at your boundaries. If you enjoyed this episode, would you please do me a favor and share it on Instagram? You can just take a little screenshot, post it to your stories and tag me in it. I would love to know if you are setting boundaries, if you have boundaries, or if this maybe made you think, you know what? I got to get some of those. I got to get some of those boundaries <laughs> because I was in the same exact boat and I'm really not pretending to be like a business veteran here, but I have seen the difference that it can make. And I have seen a lot of people that are like brand new, just starting with their business, use the same kind of hustle work all the time mentality. And it made me so grateful for the boundaries that I have in place now and the hours of operation and business structure that I created for myself. Friends, thank you so much for listening in with me today. As always, you can find me over at Camera Brave on Facebook and Instagram. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you next time on the Camera Brave Show.